Hey, what's up, Silver Stackers? Thank you so much for being here. This is Silver Slayer. Is Silver Sparkle starting to fade? Is Silver starting to lose that shine? Are people starting to give up on the best investment in the world? Well, I found an article talking about that, and I like this article in particular because it's not a primary silver site. You know, it, this is DesertSun.com. And it's interesting that they posted an article like this. And I wanted to bring this to your attention to see what outsiders think about silver. Or some of the points they're going to make on why silver is starting to fade or lose that shine. So I think it's going to be a very good uh, video. I think that um, this is going to be a very educational video at least. So um, if you do enjoy this video by the end, hopefully you do stick around. Make sure you like the video. And if by the end of the video you think that my channel is worthy of a subscription, then please do because I do post daily videos. Um, so the link to this article from Desert Sun will be in the description. Antiques. The silver sparkle starting to fade. Well, silver is a metal on the minds of many these days. It was only a few months ago that silver was selling for more than $25 per ounce. And let me break this down. Let me break this down. And by the way, I do pause sometimes in these articles, but everything I pause to mention is something that is just as, if not more important than what you know the article is saying. People get desensitized to higher prices. So then when the price goes down, it shocks them. When in reality, it's not that big of a shock. It's not something you should be that worried about. For example, in March of 2020, silver was $11. $11. I was telling people, buy silver because it's not going to stay $11 for long. And what happened? About a year later, silver was $30. Tripled that. But most people sold silver at $11. They gave up. They lost faith when they should have been buying. Another example, silver, the average price has been $15 for the last 10 years. I started stacking in 2014. I started making silver stacking videos in 2015. July 4th, 2015 is actually my channel's birthday. I've been telling people for as long as I could remember, seven, eight years, that silver is the best investment. I remember when silver was $15, $16. For most of my my YouTube career, silver's been $16, $17. The first time it broke past $20 in 2016, we all celebrated. So I'm used to lower prices, but someone who maybe got in during the Wall Street silver movement at $30 last year, you could see how they look at $18 silver and they're freaked out because they're desensitized to that $30 level. But whether you perceive the market as high or low right now is irrelevant in the grand scheme of things because in a couple of years from now, you're not going to, the, the difference between $18 silver and, you know, $25 silver will be pennies. So you just got to remember, is this some type of perspective, this desensitized price that you have on the market determining whether you think the price is low or high right now? Because $18 for an ounce of silver or $25 an ounce of silver or $50 or even $100 is way below how much value it actually has. It's extremely undervalued, whether it's $18 or $25. So despite being only 90% silver, early 20th century American silver dollars were selling for gigantic premiums with foreign silver coinage not far behind. With interest rates near zero, the cost to hold silver was negligible compared to the potential upside. Today, that mentality has changed. As I write this, silver is selling for just over $19 an ounce, and there are those predicting a further fall to 15 or even lower. So what do you do? What do you do? Well, like I said, if you understand silver's true value, what do you do? The answer would be buy. It would be buy. And just keep buying as it goes lower. I mean, for me, whether I pay 18 or if I if I'm buying when spot price is $18 or whether it's $15 or even whether it's $25, it's all the same to me. For for, for I don't know if it's just because I I truly just understand how valuable it really is 
or I'm just not one of those people, the coupon type people. I'm not one of those people that's going to drive, you know, 20 miles away just to get a couple pennies off the gallon of gas. I'm not one of those people. But for me, I feel the exact same inside, whether I'm paying, you know, $18 an ounce or 25 It's the same exact thing in my opinion. It, that's just for me, though. Maybe if you're a new stacker trying to lower your dollar per ounce average, or maybe if you just have a very small budget and want to, you know, whatever. That, that may be for you. But for me, I really don't. It doesn't matter. And that's a good question. I want to ask you, what price is too high? When will you throw in the towel and say, you know what? I'm not comfortable paying this much. Is it when it's silver's $50? When it's $100? When it's $40? What's that price for you? Do, you? do you even have a price? A lot of us don't think about that, you know, because what if silver does get $50 next year? Will you still be buying it? Well, he, this guy continues to say he doesn't know what he would do, but here's a little history. Silver is an elemental metal, right? We're talking about elements on the periodic table, folks. Jam between copper and gold at number 47. And that's why it's AG 47, right? So anyways, um, on the periodic table, there's a reason this is, uh, you know, or there is because the reason has chemical and physical properties that of silver that fall between those of other metals as a so-called precious metal grouping that includes gold in a group of six platinum related metals. Its uses in the fabrication of jewelry, decorative items goes back thousands of years and actually 5,000 years since the beginning of man. Since the beginning of man, silver has been valuable. And it's been used as a as an exchange, I couldn't even say like money, but as an exchange of good or service since the beginning of man as well. They've always seen silver as valuable because it is, because nothing else um, reacts the same way that silver does. We're talking about the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity, electricity, and even light sensitivity. So anyways, it goes on to say, however, it has also become or has some characteristics that make it hugely valuable to industry including the highest, like I just said, thermal and electrical conductivity of any of the metal. Much of today's electronic circuitry makes critical use of silver, as do other manufacturing sectors. In short, it's not just another pretty face. You know, and that's one of the funniest things is some people think silver's valuable just because it's shiny. Now, that's not the case. Kind of for gold, and, and I know that's crazy to say, but it's kind of what makes gold valuable. Now, yes, gold is using electronics. Actually, if you watched my video the other day, I posted I used to scrap gold out of cell phones and actually showed the gold that I scrapped out of cell phones. Um, it was actually the first silver video I've ever made in my life in 2014. I found the original video when I was very young and I showed it. I was two weeks into stacking and I showed my stack and I actually showed the, the gold that I scrapped out of cell phones pretty funny you should go watch that video it's pretty cringy because it was my you know i just started stacking but anyways yeah so due to its widespread and vital industrial application silver is bought and sold as a commodity on exchanges around the world trading takes place 24 hours a day on you know on business days creating an active market in which the spot price meaning the price of immediate or near immediate delivery adjusts every few seconds the spot price is for one ounce, you know, three nines fine, silver. I'm not going to talk. We already know about this. So, um, so yeah. With that said, there is no particular world shortage of silver. Uh, that is something that is... N you have to give more context if you're going to say that, right? So there are mines throughout the Americas and elsewhere. Thousands of tons are mined each year. It was a first mine. Uh, the first mine is now in Turkey about 5,000 years ago. Later in Greece, however, discoveries of abundant silver in the New World did much to encourage exploration. Now, see, there's so much context he left out of this, right? He, he didn't talk about that silver is actually a byproduct, that most silver is found by accident. And he even does say 800 million ounces are, um, are mined annually, but didn't include that the demand exceeded 1.12 billion ounces this year. Doesn't include the rapidly growing um, demand of silver we're going to need over the next de decade as we advance digitally, technologically. I mean, there's so much that he's not incorporating. Because, uh, And what does he say right here? Because he says, with that said, there's no particular world shortage of silver. So he's saying... You and I could buy silver on a commodity exchange, but we should both 
Know beforehand that one standard silver futures contract covers 5,000 ounces of silver. That's a lot of bracelets. So how is that saying this? So here's the thing as well. There's more context that needs to be added. Each ounce of silver on the COMEX that someone owns, theoretically a hundred other people, or, or let's put it this way, I said it backwards. Each ounce of silver that you own in your, in your hand, theoretically a hundred other people own the same ounce on the COMEX. Because there is not enough, the, the silver that's on the COMEX that these people quote unquote have is non-existent. That there's not that much silver in circulation. So if everyone on the COMEX tried to turn those contracts into physical delivery, the silver shortage would be exposed. And that's why we say if you can't hold it, you do not own it. right? But this guy's going off of that is the truth. And then incorporating, you know, silver is most silver is thrown away when most gold is recycled and re-scrapped. And oh, by the way, going back to the point I was making earlier, gold is basically valuable because it's shiny. And that's because gold is mainly used for jewelry and necklaces, and coins, bars, right, watches, earrings, that's what gold is mainly used for, stuff that just looks cool, shiny, right, so it basically is, you know, silver is an industrial metal, so it's the exact opposite, exact opposite, meaning all that technology, it's thrown away, and the silver inside of it's never recycled, never recovered, so an ounce of gold that gets dug up out of the ground is going to stay in circulation for a century, but that ounce of silver that gets dug up out of the ground is thrown away within a couple decades. So to just to say that there is no particular world shortage of silver, you have to add a lot of context. And I'm not saying that you know tomorrow Apmex isn't going to have silver in stock. It's not like that. Moving forwards, though, the industrial sector, not the investment sector. Apmex, that's investing in coins. The, the silver demand, the silver shortage has nothing to do with the investment sector. That's a very, very small percentage of what silver is actually used for. So people always say, well, I could still buy silver on Atmex. We're not talking about Atmex. We're not talking about silver in, that, in coins. We're talking about EVs, right? Solar panels, electric vehicles. We're talking about the entire world going green. It's much, much, much bigger. And to put things in context, the U.S. Mint sells around 13 million ounce ounces of eagles per year but the demand exceeded 1.2 billion ounces 13 million ounces of eagles but 1.2 billion ounces of demand right it's not the investment sector we're talking about a much larger scale project here so anyways today more than 800 million ounces of silver are mined annually so that you know still talking about nearly 200 maybe 300 million ounces of demand on top of that plus imagine how many billions of ounces the demand's going to be in the next 10 years when the entire world goes green when every uh, car is produced or every car produced is an electric vehicle um, which is coming by the year 2030 they said so adding to the world's supply and tune of some 15 billion at today's price so while there is plenty of silver to be had see the industrial demand for silver was up more than 19% in 2021, um, and that's talking about post-global situation sectors. It seems supply and demand are moving in tandem for at least, or la at least for now. So while I don't know where silver is going, I do know it's easy to buy and sell. Jewelers pawn see it's easy to buy, but it's not easy to sell. See if you go to a jeweler, if you go to pawn, wait, never sell your silver at a pawn. See that's how I know that this is a very, very uneducated person. It's basically just going over a, an overgeneralized surface entry point or surface entry take on silver. You don't sell to pawn shops. Pawn shops don't go by spot price. And I'm not exaggerating. If you take an eagle to your pawn shop, he will ask you 4 or $5. They don't go by spot price what, whatsoever. Coin shops do. Pawn shops don't. And even my friend a couple months ago said he took silver. They offered him $4 for an eagle or a coin. It shouldn't even be legal. But pawn shops and coin shops, there's a big difference. Right? So, um, this guy says even galleries like ours have steady calls for silver, even in declining market. Galleries like ours. This is DesertSun.com. Like, this is a new site. <laughs> Um, anyway, I don't know what that meant, but um, regardless, though, you know, there's wrong ways to sell. You don't sell 
high premium semi numismatic coins to a coin shop. You have to sell that stuff on eBay or you're not going to get the the premium back. You're not going to get the money back that you paid for it. For example, you would pay $40 for a panda, but if you take that panda to your local coin shop, he's going to offer you maybe $20 max, $21 of spot price is 18. So um yeah, so when we buy our prices are tied to spot with some margin built in to keep the lights on. And that's so wrong nowadays. Maybe the maybe pre see this guy this is how you know someone hasn't been keeping up with the silver markets. This guy, he got all of his education 2019 and before. Cause this is this is information um that hasn't been updated since the global situation happened, and especially nowadays with that's how you know who's a true silver stack or who should be writing articles and who shouldn't. Because this guy's still talking about the days when there would be a dollar two over spot, which was 2019 and, you know, previous. But nowadays, some margin built to keep the lights on, that's not the case whatsoever. Um, and that's kind of also why I wanted to cover this article, because imagine someone that doesn't watch my channel, but they see an article like this, they would have such a a different and more dangerous perspective on silver than what's the reality because they're only getting half truth right it's not like he's lying he's just leaving out a lot of context and not giving accurate up-to-date information so anyways yeah I wanted to bring this to light it doesn't really go over you know some of the main stuff but hopefully I did I did you know break down and explain the stuff that you did need to know that he didn't say Right now, silver sitting at $18.77. Perfect entry point. Even if it starts going lower, still a good entry point. I mean, in my opinion, if you ever think that $18.77 is too much or too pricey for an ounce of silver, you might as well just exit the market because that's ridiculous. I mean, even if it's at $25, even if it's at $30, if you look at $30, if this number said $30 and you're like, you know what, that's too pricey. Silver's not worth that much then just exit because that, that, that means you have no idea what the true value of silver is. That means you have no idea the true value of the dollar, which is dangerous enough itself. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Like I said, if you're still watching and um, you thought this video was worthy of a like, please do. If you're still watching and you think you want to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe right in the beginning. Wait until you actually see if you like the content and if you actually do want to subscribe to my channel. I'm not just gonna. I, I hate when channels do that. You no, know, I used to do that, but it was almost just out of habit, not really thinking. But I genuinely like. I don't just want to say subscribe to my channel and like the video if you haven't even seen the video and you have you just saw my you, you just you know tuned in. You don't even know. Why would you ask someone to do that? So, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I do post daily videos. I post um, stacking strategies. I post giveaways, lots of giveaways. I do unboxing videos. I do it all. So yeah, thanks for tuning in to Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.